When it comes to contracts for agency, the common law is applied to excellent effect. If you hire an attorney, you can be sure that the attorney is not going to be working for someone else. If you hire an electrician, that person is going to do what he feels you would do if you had the capacity. The agent is held legally to account for representing the one who enters into the agency relationship and the courts will almost always support it in accord with any terms written into your agency agreement. In a like way, the mailman who dumps part of the mail he carries into the trash will be prosecuted for his failure to act as the agent for delivery. This area of the common law, as expanded into business relations, is both effective and supported. It is supported, that is, until the government leadership decides to interfere with the contract obligations of agency relationship. We have addressed the mess made by establishing educational agency. It is government arranging for teachers to have authority of a parent without effective responsibility to the parent. Our first and most uncomfortable application of agency is seen in congressional representatives who dismiss any accountability to the ones who elect them into office. They accept the authority to act in the name of the people, but take acts that these people would not take on their own volition. Should you need an example, consider that our educational agents are not selected by or even given authority by the ones who they are to represent. Government authorities have determined that they get to pick other people's agents for raising their children. That is the worst sort of governmental abuse, denying that even the law of agency will apply to those who are given in local parentis authority. What puts the icing on this cake is that the courts, the ones who are there to protect justice from government interference, are the worst offenders of parental sovereignty when it comes to the exercise of illegality. We know that there is no authority in any citizen to assign his or her neighbor's agents. They cannot tell their neighbor who they have to trust. There is no way that this authority can be given to people as their, to their representative government. It is an out and out violation of the constitutional purpose of government. Modern commercial incorporation is just the third example of our U.S. government's open violation of the citizens who own it. Corporate leaders are legislatively granted authority while denying agency responsibility and accountability. As a side note, this encourages economic misconduct in our economy. It is the same way that modern political operation in our government encourages political misconduct. Mismanagement always follows when authority is granted without appropriate responsibility for exercising that authority. Like personal agency for educators assumed by legislation, we have corporate agency assumed by corporate officers who have legislation as their only source of granted authority over the corporate property that is ultimately owned by citizen investors. Corporations are not citizens. They are ultimately owned by citizens. Everything that any corporation owns is ultimately owned by citizens and corporate ownership is purchased through investments. So who are the officers of a business corporation to represent? And this leaves us with the hollow understanding that they are to represent the corporation. Guess what? There is no legal agency there. There is no establishment of trust, no accountability to the corporation. These leaders are, by legislation, to be treated as the corporation that trusts them. In short, they trust themselves to do whatever they choose to do, claiming it is for the benefit of the corporation. Do they represent anyone? Certainly they have no accountability to the people who work in the corporation, who are also employees. If they did, they were, there would be no glass wall, no us and them operation of the corporate business. If they represented employees, there would be no division between management and labor. They would likely 
protected from almost all demands of owners and investors. They effectively answer to the corporation that they run as if they were the corporate owners. In modern corporate theory and approach, whatever they do as corporate officers is what the corporation has decided to do. This is not some application of common law for the benefit of common people. It is legislative creation of a commercial aristocracy. It is people who are authorized as owners of the property belonging to others. And they are subordinate only to government. The existence of the modern commercial corporation is the fruit of government leadership that feels no need to represent the commoners of America. It is the bitter fruit that comes from sovereign ruler who would set common people under authority of economic barons. This arranges a commercial aristocracy to rule over corporate resources in the name of the sovereign. Our laws of incorporation witness the intentional creation of an economic feudalism. If you plant seeds from a thorn tree, you get a harvest of thorns. Where a corporate government denies the agency to citizens in creating modern corporations, the fruit is corrupt corporate leadership that denies its agency to anyone. Corporate leadership acts as owners of other people's property and does it with the active involvement of government, protecting their actions from challenges by the owners. But where then is the fruit of granting this corruption of personal ownership? It is seen in these same corporate leaders, for the good of the corporation, investing corporate resources to influence political leadership. Corporations are not even citizens. For non-citizens to buy influence in government is bribery. It is a felony. It is something so obviously criminal that any citizen who engages in buying special privileges would face prosecution. For our political leaders to accept value from these non-citizens is bribery, for which they should be thrown into prison right along with the corporate donors who offer that corruption. Our political leaders have exercised their legislative authority to create this corruption and now take active part in it. Corrupt barons no longer answer to government authority. They have become the ones who influence government activities. What we see as a recent witness is that most amazing and revealing political assertion that these corporate giants are too big to fail. We have government protecting the barons instead of serving the people. The same government leadership that started with denial that they serve the people have now created their own masters. Our political barons have so mismanaged government that it now answers to the same corporate barons that it created. They feel powerless to challenge these economic leaders because they have become a primary source of political potency through the improper authority that was granted through political rejection of citizen sovereignty. This is systematic corruption and neither the political nor economic aristocracy is able to disrupt the corruption without denying their own privileged authorities. Agency is a contractual matter. Whenever and wherever the government, whether through legislation, executive action, or judicial determination, creates an agency without a contractual agreement, we are forced to live with the resulting corruption. Where the courts do not serve the purpose of justice, but arrange a theater for court of the courtroom for the use of legal aristocracy, then even the appearance of justice puts wasteful expense on citizens who might come seeking justice that is their right as sovereign citizens. The court assigns the indigent citizen a public defender. What is this nonsense that the court picks an agent for the accused? Agency is a contractual relationship, and the government is forbidden to even interfere with contract obligations. Having the court set these obligations is just a witness to the improper operation of the entire court system. It is denial that the courts serve we the people, serving the law instead. 
like legislative leadership that now answers to the corporate barons that they created. So the judicial functions now answer to written laws. It is our entire legal system that now demonstrates political corruption at every level. The rule is there for all to see. There is no less effective way to do anything than to divide into competing sides where one can only accomplish what the other cannot prevent. Our entire judicial system is engaged in waste, serving the court system instead of the citizens who come before it. It does much of this at public expense, passing the cost of systemic corruption to the people who supposedly authorize its continuation. The appropriate rule is found in medical science. An infection never heals itself, it either runs its course and the corrupted person heals, or it kills its host. We have a corruption in law and government that has no limit. It will continue until it kills the nation or until there is an outside interference that kills the infection. A corporation may be a legal person, but it is not independent of its creators and owners. That is the Frankenstein monster myth. Corporate leadership declaring some corporation action to be in accord with corporate purpose does not excuse it from legal responsibilities to corporate owners. That is an attempt to create agency by act of law, granting corporate officers authority to act as agents of the corporation, even though the corporation is not required to honor or accept human trust relations. The challenge for U.S. citizens is that these organizations are now functioning as monsters, as legal persons who do not answer to the ones who created them. As in the Frankenstein story, the created being has been empowered to decide on other purposes to serve. And then government legally protects corporate leaders when they act on their hired leader wishes. And this gives us the answer. We are not part of this corruption. And it only exists because government has denied the very purpose we gave to it through its constitutional creation. In our national infancy, we did not realize that this would become so damaging, and in our ignorance, we allowed it to continue. Tolerance of political and economic corruption is not required of us. We are the sovereign source of all government authority and we are the ultimate source of all commercial authority. Where we assume our position as corporate owner of this nation, we become the cure. It is a cure that only we can apply. We can, as owners, direct action. Whenever and wherever we are agreed, by our agreement we become the only party in interest. The direction is also indicated by the medical example. The infection is living off of us. If we cut off its ability to live off our productivity, the corruption will no longer be able to survive. Where we pick up the reins of management and turn our leadership in a direction that serves citizen needs and wants, then that is the way that our leadership will go. In the study of legal agency, we find a way to understand the corruption from which our government and its leaders suffer. We find legislative leadership that responds to non-citizen influences more than to our needs and wants. This is corruption that legislative leadership created when they denied the authority was limited by common law agency. We find legislation creating corporate agency that seems designed to create a corporate aristocracy, one that answers only to itself, corrupting our political leadership as it continues. Through this course, we also see that when we are agreed, we are in authority to put a stop to this. We are, as a people, the authority that can lift our government back onto track that was set for those who represent us. We do not have to honor commercial corporate authority as our elected leaders now do. For we are the real source of government. When gathered, 
we can lift our government leadership back into authority over our corporate economy, eliminating the wasteful corruption by redefining the commercial corporation to serve the purpose of our nation. And this is national purpose. It is the public purpose. And we are the public.